Welcome to Story Talk, a series of online conversations between myself and artists featured in the Singapore Showcase for StoryFest 2022. This episode features a conversation between myself and Daryl Yam, arts organizer and writer. Hi Daryl, welcome to Story Talk. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you work with stories. Uh, hi Kamini, uh, thank you for first of all inviting me to talk with you today. Um, so I am a novelist and an arts organiser, so I think very quickly how I work with stories has to do with those two things. So obviously I write them, you know, and I write them in a particularly long manner and they are often published, which is something I'm very grateful for. Uh, another way in which I work with stories is that, you know, as an arts organiser and basically as a co-founder of Singlet Station, um, um, I'm very much in the business of promoting stories, right? And advocating um, uh, for, I guess, you know, greater awareness of the stories that are being written here in Singapore. So you mentioned, you know, that you, you write stories yeah. and that's how you express yourself through stories that are written and for other people to read. So now you are getting ready to mm. perform stories live to an in-person audience mm. at the Playden at the Arts House as part of the Singapore Showcase for StoryFest 2022. Mm. I'm excited because I'm going to see you <laughs> and hear you tell stories yeah. for the first time. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit more about your preparation, how you feel? And I think right now, I think, you know, having put in some years into my practice as a novelist, I did kind of respond to the invite with the mentality like, oh, I'm not writing for the page anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm writing for performance. I'm writing for essentially what I've conceived in mind as basically like a monologue or like a soliloquy, just something that I'm presenting orally, mm -hmm. you know, and... That shift in mindset has already been something that I've had to grapple with. And I think my preparation is mainly involving, or rather has to do with what it means to deliver a story in that fashion. Over the course of rehearsing, I'll just figure out if some bits work or not in that oral tradition. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I'll learn and grow so much as a storyteller in that way, but it's a challenge that is both a bit scary, but also mostly exciting. So what yeah. are you most looking forward to, you know, transitioning now from someone who writes stories mm. on the page for print, yeah, yeah, yeah. for someone to read quietly on their own, but now <laughs> you're writing to perform it yourself, not, yeah. not even for someone else to tell the stories. So what's that like for you? I am anticipating it, right? Um, it's basically like... A, the challenge of seeing people's reactions as they listen to my story on the spot in a kind of unfiltered way. I think mean, that's the, 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 the challenge. I think as a, as a writer of stories, right? And then you, you, the book gets published and technically the story doesn't even belong to you anymore at that point. It gets on the shelf, people read it on their own time. Their reactions will come to me either immediately or like months, months later down the road. Whereas, yeah, I think performing in a space as intimate as the play then, like there is no running away from how people respond to you and That'll be exciting to see this time because the audience is actually technically part of that experience, right? So yeah. it's all about the immediacy, right, yeah. of storytelling and that spontaneity and the fact like you are telling together with a community of people who mm -hmm. are there because mm -hmm. they're responding to you, you are responding to them. Yes. And the words kind of change depending on what kind of audience you get every night. Yeah. And, yeah. and we have three nights of the Singapore Showcase. Mm. So what's the story? that you're going to share with us this year? The story that I'll be telling mainly will center around the butterfly lovers. Um, but the reason for that is something that um, uh, is something that's obviously very personally meaningful to me because it has very much to do with the story of my grandfather, specifically my maternal grandfather and how he passed away. So um, I'm looking forward into getting into those details. So, was The Butterfly Lovers one of the Chinese classics, the legends yeah. that you grew up with, whether you, you read it or you saw it performed? Or... No, actually, not at all. Like, um, the, the, the story of The Butterfly Lovers came to me much later in life, you know? I think, so for me, in, with, as over the course of my monologue, I contextualized the story as um, something that I had to kind of find out and do a bit of research on because 
anything butterfly related that came into my childhood came in the form of a myth. You know, this urban myth that I think a lot of people have heard before. The idea that if a butterfly or a moth visits your home, you're not allowed to disturb it mm -hmm. or touch it because it is meant to be like the, the spirit of someone in your family that's visiting you. Yeah. Um, so I think for a long time, I was trying to, I guess, wonder how that myth even came about. And then that's how like, uh, it kind of like took me on this journey of a little bit of research into the story of the butterfly lovers. And then I realized how prevalent that story is in our culture. I like this whole aspect of how, <laughs> you know, you, you were aware of the story. Yeah. You never really had it told to you or no. you never really heard or read the whole version long ago. No. But this is also, you know, a belief that practitioners of oral tradition have how sometimes the story calls to you. Mm -hmm. It calls for a particular teller to tell it at mm. a certain time and place and yeah. to a certain group of listeners. Yeah. So it's nice to hear that, you know, from yeah. you and for me to be able to create this opportunity for this to happen. You build a sense of common identity with your audience, your listeners, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or even the same group of people who've read the same story or the same book or love yeah. the same writer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more than knowing where you belong in the world and how to explain the world yeah. around us, it's this sense of community that you know yeah. literature and stories create. Yeah. I think when you write novels in particular, there is this unspoken pressure, right? Of like writing for a particular audience. Mm. And I know of authors who have kind of really took that to heart and allowed that kind of demand shape the output that they put out into the world. Whereas for me, I think I've always, I don't know, maybe it's arrogance, but I've always been confident that anything I wrote should first and foremost be for me. But then naturally the expectation is maybe someone out there like me, right? Um, will also chance upon the book in their own way. And then they get to be a part of this community, so to speak. And I think it's so interesting because in, this, in, the, in the context of the Singapore showcase, it was, again, it's so daunting because the community is right in front of you, right? And some people will be with you in that moment, some people will not. But there is that unspoken agreement nonetheless that everyone's a part of this experience together, which is so interesting. Because again, as a novelist, you put something out into the world. However that relationship forms, however that connection between me and a reader forms is own time, own target. Whereas in that moment, it's really like, it's a moment that is, I don't know, it's like unbroken, suspended again and like locked away in its own time and space. It must be very, must be very special. It's also very spiritual because ah, you wow. are supported and you're backed by all the people that yeah. have already told the yeah, butterfly yeah. lovers yeah, yeah. and the butterfly lovers themselves. Yeah. You know, I strongly believe that the story is there every mm. time it is told. Mm. The characters are there and yeah. the ancestors of the stories are also there, present. Mm. And it's up to us to call them. And that's the community that we need, right? Mm. To transfer the spirit of the story through us to this new audience, to these hundreds of people that we're going to share it to oh, incredible. over these three days. So yeah. still get into that, that frame of mind. Wow. wow, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So Daryl, what are some things you wish for in the future, mm. you know, as we all progress as storytellers and writers and creators mm. of narratives, right? So what are some things you wish for for the future of storytelling? What I definitely wish for is a willing audience, right? And for the audience to expand naturally. And then I think I take my writer hat off, put my arts organizer hat. I think we need more people who are willing to advocate for this art in whatever form it takes, you know, and I think we need more people to inspire others, you know, and also, again, on a baseline, enjoyment. It can be an extremely enjoyable art form, whether or not you read it on the page or you encounter it as it is spoken, mm -hmm. either in a bar or in the context of the play den. There can be a lot of joy in that and that is time worth spending. Thank you so much, Daryl, for joining me and chatting with me on Story Talk. Oh, you're welcome. I had such a great time. If you enjoyed this conversation between myself and Daryl, don't forget to listen to his story on Story Threads and watch the other interviews with all the other artists from the Singapore Showcase featured in Story Talk. 